everyone and welcome to the next edition of the Training Talk series by Chartered Accountants Ireland. My name is Sinead from the team and I get to talk to course participants and tutors about our training offerings and today we are going to talk about the Diplomas in Sustainability Reporting and Assurance and we have Louise Gorman joining us, Programme Lead Tutor. Louise, thank you so much for coming along and agreeing to share your insights about the programme. Thank you um, for taking the time as well. How are you firstly? Great. Um, looking forward to the start off of the diploma um, and looking forward to spring coming as well. Absolutely. And look, it's great because this is an exciting time for us, you know, brand new programmes. And it's brilliant to be able to give people a bit more of a feel and an insight as to, you know, what they're all about. So, look, I know who you are, Louise, but for the benefit of folk tuning in, would you tell us a bit about yourself? Sure. Um, well, I'm a an assistant professor in Trinity Business School here in Dublin um, and really a lot of my teaching and basically nearly all of my research now has been devoted towards the area of sustainability reporting. So as we were chatting before we started, Sinead, it really has grown um, quite a bit in the last few years. So that's taken up um, a lot of my time, um, but I'm enjoying it. Oh, I can imagine it. It really is a hot topic and it's it's not going anywhere. <laughs> Definitely not. Definitely not. So it's timely then that obviously we have these programs on offer. So what about we step through them for the benefit of folk tuning in? And I would love to firstly ask, in terms of content, what is covered in the programs, Louise? Um, really, the programs are quite similar. So in terms of, say, there's the sustainability reporting diploma, and that is six modules, and the, the diploma in sustainability reporting or audit and assurance of sustainability yeah. reporting, that is seven modules. So the first six are common, and then the seventh is just for the audit and assurance diploma. So in terms of content, the first module gives a sets the landscape really in terms of sustainability reporting so that you're familiar with the regulatory requirements that we do touch on the, the core concepts that you get a sense of what we're going to be dealing with, the structure of particular there's a very, very strong focus on the European sustainability reporting standards. So there's a structure to those standards. So we set that in in terms of its governance, strategy, risk management, metrics and targets. So we get all of that landscape set. And then we move into the second module, which really deals very much with ESRS 2. So that's one of the European sustainability reporting standards. And that really sets out a lot on the role of the board and governance of sustainability reporting um, and some specifics then in terms of your materiality requirements and so on. So really the first two modules are getting you prepared, the basis of preparation, all of that, that housekeeping that needs to be done. And then we go into our third module, which deals solely with climate change. And really climate is kind of considered the priority at the moment that we have targets to reach by 2030. So the standards in climate, well, we have the European standards. And as I said, that's really where our focus is. And um, there's a very comprehensive standard there on climate. Also, IFRS have their ISSB standards and there's a sole standard on climate there as well. Also, if you're doing business with UK firms, um, they're very much aligned with what's called the Task Force on Climate Related Financial Disclosures. So it's very important to give that module a lot of time. And um, so that's delivered by um, Dave Fitzgerald, and he has a lot of experience in reporting on climate and he's worked with some big entities there. So you're in safe hands. Um, and then our fourth module moves on to other environmental reporting matters. So we're covering topics like water and the circular economy, biodiversity. And um, there's a fourth, which for some reason, my mind has completely drawn a blank. So um, water, it'll come back to you. It'll, it'll come back, back to you. <laughs> I'm looking at this stuff all the time, but basically they're all covered in that module, Cormac Madden from the ESB is covering that module. And it's really, I guess, 
climate has moved on very fast in terms of climate reporting. The other environmental areas are very much still evolving. So it's really to kind of get you in terms with like the circular economy, biodiversity. There's a lot there that we're not really familiar with. So it gets you up to speed with that. Our fifth module then is on workforce. So delivering that is a colleague of mine in Trinity, um, Nafu, Professor Nafu, who has a HR background um, and in particular the analytics around HR because workforce, as we know, is a HR topic. Um, but really it's the data and that's really from a reporting perspective, that's what we're concerned with. So a lot got to do there on protection of workers, their health and safety, and um, dealing with trade unions, diversity, uh, uh, inclusion, and so on. And then the final module for those taking the Diploma in Sustainability Reporting is in terms of really there's some other social issues that need to be touched on so consumers and end users um affected communities and we also have a few areas just for wrapping up so um internal control so even if you're not going down the audit and assurance route internally within a company it is important that you have your internal controls in place and we talked to things like the COSO framework which really I think already anyone involved in internal audit might be familiar with and um, just some say specific requirements on what the audit committee needs to be on top of risk management whatever it might be and then those taking the diploma in sustainability or the audit and assurance of sustainability reports will take the seventh module on audit and assurance and that's with Brian Murphy from Deloitte so fantastic experience there both in terms of educating and in practice just, um, and that will cover really all of what's coming out in terms of really from this year, we'd be using ISA E3000, which is just for non-financial reports in a general sense. But we do have a separate standard coming down the line, um, ISA 5000. So Brian will be talking to you really about what's currently being done, because many companies are already engaging in sustainability reporting and um, what's been done, the type of work that needs to be, you know, do, doing all the, the audit work for the audit team, who needs to be on the team and so on. And then really the direction we're going in in terms of the new standard and really ultimately what needs to be in that final assurance report. So that's the programme, Sinead. Lots packed in, to say the least, Louis. Yeah, busy. <laughs> You've been busy. You've been busy. <laughs> and look, I suppose for anybody tuning in wanting to understand a bit more, maybe the mechanics, how the thing works, how do students study? Mm -hmm. Well, it's online. So um, your engagement with the module, with the programme tutors will be mainly in a three hour block on Zoom. Um, and that will be, say, you know, it, it's typically on a monthly basis. Now there are breaks, say for summer or whatever needs to be. Um, so that's the three hour Zoom session. And that's followed up a week later with a one hour Q&A session, because it's important that you have an hour or an, a, not an hour, a week to yeah. digest all of the information and then you can come back and ask questions and answers. Now, those four hours would be your, what we'd say, live learning. But um, on top of that, there would be, we would say for each module, a good weekend's work of independent learning. So that could involve podcasts, YouTube videos, readings and um, exercises that you might need to do. So that's effectively everything will be delivered through Moodle. Uh, so Moodle is your kind of one-stop shop for yeah. all of that. So once you register in the program, you get access to Moodle. All your notifications go straight into your email because you'll be registered that way with Moodle. Um, and then there is assessment, which will probably take up, it'll be part, your assessment will probably be a lot of your learning, but it's also assessment as well. So you know tell um, me a bit about that because that is a popular question how do you assess what's involved <laughs> yeah so in the teaching and I suppose I didn't really spend as much time there on the teaching but really our approach in teaching will be very case-based okay. and we will be paying a lot of attention to say key sectors so key sectors we are here in Ireland so those that are economically active in Ireland but also that are quite 
active or will be required to be active in the area of sustainability reporting. Yeah. So we we'll focus on those particular sectors um, and it will be very case based in terms of the teaching, but also in terms of the assessment. So your assessment then will be to pick a case um, maybe in a sector that you have a lot of clients in or whatever that might be, but a sector of your interest and to basically pick a company who's already engaging in sustainability reporting um, through a voluntary framework like the TCFD or the GRI, the Global Reporting Initiative, and to take that content and really perform a gap analysis and to see how ready that company is for, for ESRS and that you can do as much as you can to prepare that company for ESRS and see what else needs to be done for that company. So that's really what we'd be doing there. And in terms of the, if you're taking the diploma in sustainability reporting on its own or for the one in audit and assurance, it, the assessment is based in two blocks. So the okay. first piece would be due in after your third module on climate and the second piece would be due in after module seven so we know some people won't be taking module seven mm -hmm. but it'll be due after module seven and really there will be an extra piece for those taking the assurance module module seven that they will do a bit of work on that as well in terms of the ideal candidate you know who is who is the ideal candidate who's this course for or both courses <laughs> Yeah, well, to start off with the Diploma in Sustainability Reporting, um, you know, it's been offered by Chartered Accountants Ireland um, and I've been doing some work with you guys, even in CPD and so on. And, you know, typically the primary aud audience is accountants. Mm -hmm. um, now, we're not saying it's not suitable for if you're not an accountant, you're still welcome. That really this particular area is going to be an organisational level initiative. So you'll have HR, procurement, IT, everyone will probably have a part to play in sustainability reporting. So it's not a prerequisite that you are an accountant. Yeah. Um, so it, it is open to all, but who should take it would really be someone who's going to be involved, directly involved in the reporting process. Okay. That it's quite technical um, and we are training you to report. Um, so say if you are maybe at high level, like a supervisory level, and you're not actually going to be directly involved in the reporting, mm -hmm. the Institute is already offering a fantastic certificate in sustainability. So if you really only need that high level knowledge, the cert might be better for you, whereas if you're going to be directly involved in the reporting, mm -hmm. the diploma would be the one. Now, when we move on to the assurance side of things, that's very particular because up until 2026, the CSRD, which is the directive under which the European Sustainability Reporting Standards have been introduced, that provides that until 2026, there will be what we call a grandfathering process in place. Now, in order to be grandfathered in as a SASB, SASP, which is a sustainability assurance service provider, you would need to have under, you'd need to firstly be a statutory auditor. Um, but then having been a statutory auditor recognized as one, you need to undertake 60 hours of CPD. Now, it doesn't all need to be structured. So the diploma would provide you with 60 hours of structured continuous professional development. So you'd be ready to go had you done the diploma. Um, you may want to, I'm sure there are other offerings on place, you may want to do some structured and some semi-structured, but really for an assurance provider, the diploma will be excellent in just preparing you to meet those qualifications. Brilliant. No, really useful just to step through that. And so many acronyms, Louise. I think I need I a know. glossary of terms. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, there's a great one available on the sustainability page on the Chartered Accountants website. It's fantastic. Keep everybody right, I know, yeah. um, because it is, it's a minefield. You know, there's so many thrown about there. Um, but sure, if you take these programs, you're going to be an expert in it all. <laughs> awesome. It's soup all the way. <laughs> and finishing up before I let you go, Louise, um, what would you say to someone considering um, the diplomas? Mm -hmm. I'd certainly say um, if you are completely unaware of sustainability, it might be worth either A, considering doing the search first, 
or be doing a bit of reading up. As I've said, the Institute have fantastic resources on their website. Um, so to just get familiar, because yes, the first module will set the scene, but it will be quite fast moving. And we do assume that you have some level of knowledge in sustainability that we won't be introducing it from first principles. So I would say that um, I'd say to have a bit of energy because it will be fast moving yeah. and, and to be comfortable enough with independent learning. We're no, we know that anyone taking this diploma is in the workplace and that you don't, it's not a full time program, but to be prepared that, you know, it is a full 60 hours that you may only be live online for four hours per module, but we do expect you to do a quite a bit of independent learning as well, not to be daunted. And um, some people and I've often given talks for you guys or I give talks here in Trinity and I see people looking afraid when we talk about these new standards. We will we will take you through them step by step. It's an exciting area and it's something that really should be embraced. And really, I guess one question that does come up quite a bit is in a given practice, you know, um, how many people should maybe be trained up in this area? And we always say back, it depends on your client base, that the CSRD is really going to impact those companies who are already reporting under what was the NFRD. Sorry, Sinead, more acronyms. But the non, <laughs> the non Write it down, go look it up. <laughs> the non-financial reporting directives. So that was really PIs or public interest entities. Um, so they're going to fall into the net really they're already in it because it's reporting for the 2024 year so they'll be reporting in early 25 the following year then all large firms fall into the net so think about who your clients are um, and then if you find you will have a lot of clients falling into this area definitely it's, it's worth getting a few people trained up um, and it's often a decision at practice level um, you know whether you want one specialist or whether you want the whole team to be um, ready to go in this area and also not to be complacent about the impact that's going to hit SMEs in the coming years that currently it's only listed SMEs FRAG who've drafted the standards they are now issuing voluntary standards for SMEs as well. But because there's a huge emphasis in the standards on the value chain, that what we're hearing even already is that SME suppliers um, are already being asked by larger entities, um, say their customers or whoever it may be, for a lot of sustainability data. So it's good to be trained up and to know what the requirements are so that you're ready to gather that data. And as we said at the beginning, it's not going away. So the day is going to come that probably all companies are going to be reporting this in some shape or form. Absolutely. There is that trickle down effect for sure. Louise, brilliant. Thank you so much. We've covered lots there. And as I said at the start, you know, it is just to give insights. Anybody who perhaps have, a, you know, a, a, an outline interest, a bit more of a feel of what's involved. So thank you so much for taking us through all of that. Really, really appreciate it. Thank you, Sinead. Brilliant. Well, folks tuning in, hopefully you find that really useful. Coming up next on the screen will be details of enrollment and everything you need to know about the programmes and signing up. And until next time, we will see you soon. Thanks again, Louise. Thanks, Sinead. Bye. Bye now.